Superman is one of the world's greatest heroes, but did you know he started out as a villain? This is the old school history of Superman. In 1933, two young men made a story about a man who used his amazing powers to be a total jerk. This story was called The Reign of the Superman and was published in science fiction, the vanguard of future civilization, which was a small fiction magazine made by Jerry Siegel and Jules Schuster. The story begins when a scientist named Professor Smalley has an offer for a homeless man named Bill Dunn. Smalley says he wants to give Bill a warm place to stay and a meal, but he actually has a more sinister intention. Earlier, he found a meteor that had a mysterious chemical inside it. He tested it on animals and it had strange side effects. Now he wanted to test it on a human. Professor Smalley took Bill home and let him clean up and gave him a new suit and gave him a meal. Unknown to Bill, Professor Smalley added the chemical in his coffee. Bill felt dizzy and ran out of the house. Bill went running down the streets as he shouted gibberish until he crashed into a tree. Bill fell asleep and when he awoke, he was no longer Bill Dunn, but something called the Superman. The Superman has powers different from what we know today. He can intercept interplanetary messages, read minds, force ideas in people's heads, see anywhere in the universe, has knowledge of all of the universe, and super hearing. Next begins a Superman's rampage where he went to a library to make fun of an Albert Einstein book. Aside from bothering people in a library, Superman wanted money. He went to a drugstore and used his power of suggestion by tricking clerks into giving him $115. He also used his powers to see into the future and to use that to gamble and manipulate the stock market. Meanwhile, Professor Smalley finds a newspaper article that tells about Bill getting this money from gambling. After reading the article, Smalley decided to write a letter to the newspaper explaining what happened to Bill, that he should be killed. After writing about how much of a threat Bill is, Professor decided he wants the power for himself and begins to prepare the chemical again. Bill sensed what the Professor was up to and decided to return to the lab to stop Professor Smalley. Professor Smalley was about to consume the chemical until Bill arrived to the lab and knocked it out of his hands. The two began to fight each other in the lab over who got to be the one Superman. Later on, some strange events started happening all over the world, such as a world peace conference broke out into a fight. This broke the attention to a newspaper that got a letter from Professor Smalley. The editor decided to send out a reporter to investigate Professor Smalley. The reporter couldn't find anything and decided to go home. But when he drove home, the car led to a mysterious building. The reporter found a chair and sat down, and then suddenly metal bars came out from the chair and tied the reporter up. And that is when he found Bill, a.k.a. the Superman. Superman began to have a chat with the reporter. He revealed that he killed the professor in their fight earlier and was about to send all the Arby's of the world out to war so that they would kill each other. The news reporter was angered by this, but there was nothing he could do. Suddenly, Bill had a vision that he would lose all his powers and soon after that he did. Now that he was powerless, Bill decided to let the reporter go and as the reporter left, Bill wondered what would have happened if he used his powers for good. A year later in 1934, Jerry Siegel and Joel Schuster did just that when they came up with the concept of Superman that's closer to the one we know today. 
After a few roadblocks in getting the book published with a comic book company, they finally got the Superman we know today published in 1938 by National Comics, later known as DC Comics. The original concept is completely different from the Superman we know today. The only elements that are kept was the super hearing and vision, and they did kind of work a little differently than what we know today. Sure, there's a reporter, but it's not Lois or Clark. Bill's antagonist is a mad scientist like Lex Lupor, but neither character is much of a hero in this story. Another thing this does have in common with early Superman is its ties with the Great Depression. In the early days of Superman, many times the Man of Steel would go up against corrupt businessmen and politicians to defend the common man. This is sort of a similar story. Professor Smalley is a man of great wealth who takes advantage of a man with no money. As I said before, Bill was also a villain in this story. He did start off poor, but the more money and power he got, the more corrupt he became. In a way, Bill became the corrupt man that treated him like a lab rat. Both of them were similar to the corrupt men Superman would fight during his early years. What's your favorite Superman origins? Leave your questions in the comments below. Thank you for watching.